All right, so for this video, I want to talk about the steroid era in the 90s and also talk about Jose Canseco, which I'll talk about more about later on in this video. But first, I want to give a shout out to Savan House. Savan, thank you so much for the recommendation of this video. So I want to start off kind of with the late 80s. I didn't really start looking at statistics until like 1989. I was not really aware of Canseco's 40-40 season in 1988, but in 1989, I was getting um, to get to know about Kevin Mitchell and his season, his MVP season, 47 homers in 1989. I think a lot of it has to do also with This Week in Baseball, my favorite show. I love that show. We're one of my favorite shows. But anyways, then in 1990, Sussel Fielder hit 51 home runs in 1990. And also, you had some players also hit 30 home runs. And then in 1991, you had some players hit 40 home runs and some players hit 30 home runs. And basically, that was it. Like, you know, have a player hit 40 home runs and, a pl and like, um, about 10 players hit 30 home runs. And then for the 92 season, uh, the National League leader in home runs was Fred McGriff with 35. I was really, I really paid attention to this home run race because I wanted Gary Sheffield to win the Triple Crown in 1992. He's two home runs behind Fred McGriff with 35, Sheffield 33, Bonds at 34, but whatever, those are National League leaders. So let's go to 1993. Now, this is where you kind of had an uptick. You had more home runs being hit in 1993, but it wasn't really noticeable. Some people may say that's just because there were two expansion teams in Florida and Colorado. Also, Mile High Stadium, that thin air, people were hitting more, more home runs. And also, Camden, uh, Camden Yards in Baltimore is also being built, which is a very hitters-friendly park. So there was that uptick of home runs in 1993, but to me as a kid, I, it wasn't really noticeable but then for the 1994 season that is where I began to notice like wow home runs are really flying out like the season got shut excuse me the season got cut short because of the strike um, so most players played about 110 games so basically Matt Williams he was on pace to hit 61 home runs Ken Griffey was on pace to hit 58 home runs and Frank Thomas was on pace at 55 home runs and at this time I was thinking like man me and my friends are thinking like man uh you know, these balls, they might be juice. Like, there might be something going on here. So, for the 95, 96, and 97 MLB seasons, that's where we really start to think about, okay, we think the balls are juice. That's what we think is going on with those seasons as people started to hit more home runs during those seasons. And then for the 98 season, 99 season, of course, excuse me, with the 98 season, that's the McGuire Saucier, where McGuire broke Roger Maris's 37-year-old single-season home run record. And then 99 season, also Sosa McGuire had good seasons. Then 2000, no one had six home runs. But in 2001, Barry Bonds, he had his record setters, his record setting season of 73 home runs in 2001. And also around this time, I want to mention that there were players that, you know, they were in the league for a good amount of years. And then all of a sudden they had this, these like one amazing season. And I'm going to get more about this later on. That's the thing about this era is like, these players, they weren't really, how should I say it? They're just like decent players, and all of a sudden they become superstars after spending a good time in major leagues. But basically, you get the point is that during the time for like 95 to 2001, home runs really spiked. Home runs really spiked. All right, so a couple things that I noticed that were kind of strange. Uh, the, first thing I th the first thing I already noticed was that basically it's just these like average players just having superstar years. So I'm gonna talk more about it later on. And I'm not going to really, I don't really want to accuse people of steroids, but you know the players who had these one or two amazing seasons. But also, it was also kind of strange that Sosa, he had over 60 home runs three times, but never led the National League in home runs during those three years, which I thought was strange. And also, during like a Fox, um, one of those Fox shows, um, sorry, during a baseball game on Fox, Steve Lyons would also say Sosa would also work out like three times a day. And like, I'm like, how is that possible? Because when you play sports, which I'm sure most of you have, like they say, you gotta like rest your muscles, like only like ex um, only work out like you know different parts of your body, or like not go overblown because you need your muscles to recover. And that's what I thought was strange is that Steve Lyons was saying how Sosa would work out three times a day for the 2001 season after that, after Bonds had the record-breaking season. I have to say, this from my standpoint, I was not liking baseball. And this is just, mil this is actually because of the economics. I couldn't stand the economics, how baseball was, was working at the time. Um, I couldn't stand how the Yankees were just being so dominant, how players just wanted to play for the Yankees. Now give credit to how they had some home homegrown talent like Jeter, Posada, um, Mariano Rivera, and so forth and Andy Pennant. But anyways, I couldn't stand baseball because of how the economics were. So I weren't, wasn't really paying attention to baseball. My um, viewership of baseballs really declined, really declined. All I cared about were the White Sox. I was an Astros fan. That was my NL team. But it was just different when they changed the Red Star. I wasn't really liking it. But the story that really that I was really interested in was in 2002, Ken Caminiti admitted to using steroids, admitted to using high dosage of steroids, admitted to using a lot of steroids. And that 
kind of made sense to me a lot because, like I said, I was an Astros fan. And Ken Caminiti, during his time with the Astros, I know the Astrodome is not good. Uh, it's not a hitter's friendly park, but when Caminiti was at the Astros, he was hitting like his home runs in the teens. He wasn't hitting really for a high average. And all of a sudden, he has this amazing season in 1996 with San Diego. I'm like, what happened? How did that happen? His season in 96 was amazing. And that really kind of like understanding how like Caminiti came out like, okay, this is why some people, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to say any names, why some people had some seasons like they did. Like they spent time in the majors for a decent amount of time. And all of a sudden, they just had these superstar numbers. And then there's Jose Canseco who blew the lid off this whole thing. And... Here's what I'll say about Jose Canseco. He said that people came to him thanking him. They were like, thank you, Jose, for saving baseball. Now, one thing that was always in the back of my mind is that Jose, he, he retired with 462 home runs, but I always thought if he hit 500, would he really talk about what was going on with steroids in baseball at the time? Because at that time, like hitting 500 home runs or 3,000 hits was like your ticket to Cooperstown. But that was always in the back of my mind. But also, Canseco said he got blackballed from baseball because he was like, um, he was the one that introduced steroids into baseball, and he had this like conspiracy theory. Or who he was, he was told by people that baseball wanted him out of baseball for good because he brought steroids in the game. And it's hard to like agree with Canseco or like believe Canseco on that because after 2001 season, the White Sox Canseco he went to Montreal for the spring train, but he was only batting 200 you know, for the Expos and they weren't gonna have a DH. And at this time, Canseco's a DH, but then Canseco, he also went to the Charlotte Knights minor league affiliate of the White Sox AAA affiliate. And he was only banned like 172. And then after that, he was done. And it's hard to say with those numbers that baseball really black belt Canseco. Yeah, obviously Canseco, he, to what extent, I don't know, but obviously he brought steroids into the game. He admitted to giving steroids to McGuire. Then was the Rangers of Vine Rodriguez, Rafael Palmero, Juan Gonzalez. And the thing that like really astounded me is that you know, first of all, Canseco, he talked like he seemed like he was like um, the expert of steroids. Like he had like some kind of PhD in this uh, medical field about steroids, the way he was talking. And just astounded me like, why would players believe or why would players let Canseco inject him or why would they let Canseco supply him with steroids? But when you look at the seasons that Canseco had, maybe they would take a chance because they wanted to have those superstar type of seasons. And like, can you imagine in that locker room? Like Canseco said he injected Mark McGuire's steroids. Can you imagine like, hey, after the game, do you want to drop our pants and inject each other steroids? Like I wonder how those conversations went, but anyways, whatever. But Canseco, he's also talking about how if you use steroids correctly, it can be healthy, which you shouldn't really believe because Canseco, he was on the DL. He was really injured a lot during his career. That would always astound me when Canseco said, would always say like, oh, steroids are okay and safe if you use them the right way. But anyways, I just said it like this. Like I said, in 2000, in the late 90s, early 2000s, I wasn't, I really highly dislike baseball because of the economics, so I just want to pay attention to where the White, where the White Sox, I love baseball in like the early and mid 90s. I really love baseball. And at the time, because I love stats, I just loved looking at stats in the paper. That was something I really liked as a kid, but steroids kind of really inflated those numbers. And at the time, I didn't want any of them in the Hall of Fame, but now like I've mellowed him and soft, it's like, I don't really care. Just, you know, I like to make videos about people being in the Hall of Fame and looking back because I love sports history and just something interesting to um, document about. But what are your thoughts? I mean, should people use steroids to be in the Hall of Fame? What do you think about this era, about the steroid age, excuse me, about the steroid era in baseball in the 90s? That's all I got to say. I just want to do a recap about those numbers and Jose Canseco and just... You know, how I always thought the ball was juice, basically. But thank you so much for your interest in this video. I greatly appreciate it. And like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. Do whatever. And thank you so much. Thank you.